My name's Alan Hart and today I'm going to show you how to add inhibitor into the heating system. So I'm going to show you a few different options. First of all, the easiest option is from a towel rail. So I'm going to do it from this towel rail here. And what we're going to do is I'm going to turn the valves off at the bottom. I'm going to take the pressure out on the towel rail and then we're going to add some inhibitor into this. And then what we'll do is <clears throat> we'll have a look at some other different options on how we can add inhibitor um, if if it were if you had like a normal radiator um, or different types of radiators. So yeah, so let's have a look at the inhibitors now, and then we'll make a start. When it comes to the inhibitor that we're going to add to the system, it's cheaper if you can use a bottled version. So any of these bottled versions are cheaper. Often it's easier to use one of these express cans, but they're quite expensive. So it just depends which one will suit you best for the, for the job that you're doing. So on this particular one at the moment, we're just gonna use one of these bottles and we're gonna pour it into the top of one of these radiators or into the top of this towel rail. So we'll do that now and then I'll show you how to inject it into a filter with some filter fluid and then also how to inject it into a normal radiator if you just got if you've just got a normal radiator so the easiest option when possible is to add chemicals into a towel rail and what we do with that is these valves at the bottom so we turn the valves off so to turn them off you're going to be turning them clockwise And you need to make sure both of the valves are turned off. Now just be careful because sometimes these valves have spinning tops. So you might think it's turned off and it might not be. So then what we're going to do, we're going to just bleed the pressure out of the top. And then once we know that that's stopped, we know that we've got, uh, we know that it's isolated and we know that these have turned the pipes off to the radiator so then we can drain some of the water out of the radiator and then we can add the inhibitor into the top of the radiator so I'll do that now I've got my bleed key and I've got a bit of a rag so what I'm going to do now I'm just going to bleed this radiator and all we're doing now we're just letting the pressure out so just open that just see a bit of water there. And now that's stopped. So we know that when we've turned these valves off at the bottom, we know that they have isolated the radiator. So for now, I'm just going to close this bleed point back up. And now I'm going to get my tub, I'm going to put it underneath the radiator valve and I'm going to drain the radiator down. And then we can open the bleed point to control the flow of water coming out. So I'll do that now. So to drain this down, I've just got myself a plastic tub. So I'm just going to put that under there. So what we're doing now is we're going to drain the radiator down. We're not draining the full heating system, just the radiator. So all we need to do now is undo the nut and there shouldn't be that much water comes out to start with. So very little, very little water has come out of there. And then what we do then is we get this bleed key. And as we open the air vent at the top, we'll see water coming down into the tub. So that, that now, what it's doing now is it's letting air in to the radiator. By letting the air into the radiator, it's letting the water come out at the bottom. So to control it, as we open it, we're letting it in quicker and obviously now it's starting to splash 
So we can control that just by closing it a little bit and that'll just slow it down so it's not splashing all over. So we only really need to get enough out um, in water as the inhibitor that we're going to put back in. But I'm going to drain most of this out on this radiator. You may find that once you've done this job and you've put your inhibitor into the system, you might then have to go and top the boiler up. So I've done another video on how to repressurize your combi boiler. Um, depending on which boiler you've got, there's all different options on there. So you can have a look at that and that'll help you with that. We've removed enough of the water out of the radiator now. So now I'm gonna connect the valve back on to the bottom of the radiator so we just need to tighten this back on what we don't want to happen is we pour the inhibitor in the top and then it comes down and out of the bottom so that's all tightened back on now so now i'm just going to open the air uh, take the air vent out at the top show you that now so i'm just going to close this blade point on top just so that i don't forget it later and i'm going to remove the full, the full valve, the full bleed point at the top. You could take the cap out, the blanking cap as well. And then we're just going to use this hole now to put the chemicals in. So I've just got a cheap funnel. You just put your cheap funnel in there and then you can get your inhibitor of choice and, and pour that in to the radiator. So we'll get some inhibitor now and we'll pour it in. I've just put some gloves on and we've got some inhibitor here that we're going to pour in. So after we've poured this in, I'll show you how to do it with some different types as well. So we'll just get us chemicals and we'll just pour that in. Just pour that into the radiator. So very, very easy to add the inhibitor into it. And then once we've added the inhibitor in, we just put the plug back in on the air point, back in on the top. And then what we'll do then is we'll open the valves on the bottom and then we'll bleed the radiator and then we can check the boiler and make sure that the boiler is still pressurized we might have to repressurize it as i said before um, and, and that's that's how easy it is to do on a towel rail so now i'll just show you some um, i'll show you some other options now on how to do it with a filter um, and how to do it with a radiator just a normal radiator as well. So I'll just get a filter now and we'll have a look at that. So you can also buy express cans and these express cans make it easy or easier to put the inhibitor into the heating system. So there's different brands, various different brands of these. This one, this one's a Fernox one, so this is um, filter fluid. And what you do with that is if you get your filter Take your cap off the bottom. Obviously, your filters would normally be that way. And again, there's different brands of filter. Most of the filters, most of um, Spirotex and Fernox, they've got the same valve or the same connection on the bottom, so you can connect onto that quite easy. And then all you do then is you just open in, you just open in your valve on bottom, and then you just connect. You just connect the plastic bit on the Fernox one onto the bottom. 
down and that's really easy that one all you need to do is just push that lever and it'll just squirt the chemicals the inhibitor into the heating system and then before you remove the the plastic bit turn the turn the valve back off on the bottom so that's how you do it if you've got a filter um, now we'll have a look we'll have a look at a radiator now just a normal radiator so I'm gonna go downstairs and I'll show you on one of the radiators downstairs if we was going to do it on a, just a normal standard radiator so the same the same procedure as upstairs really so we turn the valves off with these type of valves sometimes they have lock shields on so you need to take the cap off and make sure that it's fully wound down and the same with the other side so this side this has got this has got a thermostatic radiator valve on this one um, so we have to make sure that it's, it's fully turned off and then with these they the say that you can just inject them in but personally I take the pressure out first and you may want to drain some of the water out again and then with this it actually comes with a cap so you can you can take the end out and you can do it from the big bit there I don't know if you can see that very well but that, that there will screw in where the radiator air point goes or the blanking point at the top of the radiator or if not you can just take the bleed point out of the top and you can squirt in via via that at the top and then with that one obviously you just press that and that's it so that that's how you'd that's how you do it with a normal with a normal radiator there's lots of different options and it's very very easy to put any better in and it's it's definitely something that you can do at home as DIY um, so so yeah so thank you for taking the time to watch um, watch this um, watch this video on how to add inhibitor into your central heating system I'm just going to go back upstairs now and I'm going to open the valves at the bottom and I'm going to bleed the radiator and we're going to get the heating working again uh, if you've got any questions please add them in the comments below and thank you thank you very much for watching this video